Well, today we are going to do failure uh, due to bearing. This is like when you have a column in a building resting or bearing down on the foundation. So it's carrying all that load of all the floors that are coming down onto that column and it causes a bearing load. And the stress that that causes is nothing more than a compressive stress of the load that's being applied over the contact area. So what we're going to do is look at a real plate here. This is a two inch bar. In fact, I've got it right here. As you can see, it's, uh, it's made out of aluminum. You can see how shiny it is. It's got a couple of holes in it and we used to have uh, some instrumentation on this, uh, strain gauges they were called, and students were uh, testing it, pulling on it, and they pulled too hard. And so what happened was that when you look here, uh, this hole, which is supposed to be a half inch in diameter, which it is, I'm, I've actually measured it across here, it is a half an inch. But it has now uh, been elongated uh, to 0.513 inches, which is quite, uh, quite a bit of uh, permanent deformation. Turns out, too, that if that this part right in here is pushed out just a little bit, and uh, I can illustrate that a little bit by, I've got this cardboard here, and I don't know how well this is going to work, but if I put the cardboard on it, it will tilt back and forth like that. Right in the middle, it's bigger than it is anywhere else. So there we go. I don't know if this is coming through or not, but there it is. If it was over on the right side and there it is over on the left side. So it has definitely been pushed out right in here. Well the other thing is is that right here on this surface right here it has been bulged out in this direction in this direction and that's what I've done here is kind of shaded in here as best I could uh, by looking at it uh, the area that had actually been permanently deformed that you could physically see there was no doubt about it so now how do we go about coming up with a failure criteria for something like this so what we've got if we look at that uh, hole and uh, we're pushing on the plate uh, the plate ha is feeling a, if you will, a pressure on it, but it's not uniform. I mean, the pressure right here is going to be zero, and it's going to be a maximum right here, and then it's going to have some nonlinear distribution of, of, of pressure, which will actually be a stress acting on that hole. So what the world are we going to do? Well, from, uh, from a practical point of view, a long time ago, it was decided that what would base the uh, uh, bearing stress on is this orangey area right there. That area is nothing more, the area in bearing is equal to uh, the thick, thickness B times the diameter. It's a definition. Now the ASTM standards for doing the tests for that, they come in, they tell you how much distance away here it has to be, and then they have a procedure in which you go through of recording a load P and, and deformation, and you come up with uh, how uh, this uh, bearing stress is defined. So we have a sigma in bearing and it may be like 70% of the of the yield strength but it's it's less than 
the tensile uh, yield strength. So here we go. I've made a uh, picture or a drawing of this. And again, we have these areas down in here that have been deformed. And we're trying to stop it from doing that. So what we do, just like we're doing with a tensile failure here, we come in and we take off and look at this bottom piece here and put it in equilibrium. So this is going to be my area A sub B here. This is my B here. This bar was two inches wide. So how much force do we, can this thing have applied to it? Well, first of all, let's do the tension, tension uh, case. I've got down here at the bottom here. Get over here, I guess, right? This is not right. Okay. Uh, I looked up a couple different kinds of aluminum. So, actually, Wikipedia's got a pretty good source of some of these values. And I've got a couple of uh, uh, alloys. For instance, if we look at this uh, 7075 T6, the T6 is the heat treatment that was applied to the material. And it has a ultimate strength, or sometimes they just call it tensile strength. So you'll see it without the ultimate in there, and what it means by the tensile strength is the ultimate. Uh, so it has a yield strength of about like 63 KSI, and it has a range. Now, the 6061 is a more common one, but still uh, pretty good strengths and all that. And it has a typical values of 45 KSI for the yield, uh, tensile strength and 40 KSI for the yield strength. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and... Uh, let me get a little bit thinner here. Do our... Okay, come on. Thank you. Thank you. We're done with you, too. Okay, uh, we've got that the load that we can carry in tension is the sigma times the area that we're talking about, which is going to be... We're going to use, uh, for the tensile strength, we're going to use 40... KSI as our yield strength and our area here is going to be two inches minus a half because this is these are a half inch diameter so two minus a half and the thickness was a quarter of an inch or was or is And this turns out to be something like, not something like, I actually calculated it, uh, 15,000 pounds for it to yield right across this failure surface right there. But the, the load that would be... Uh, the one at which bearing stress would control sigma bearing times the area in bearing is equal to well what we're going to do is use uh, like seven tenths of that uh, or seventy percent of forty times ten to the third but my area now you see is is much much less because it's this area here, and that area is, it's a quarter inch thick, and this is a half inch here. So we got a quarter and a half, and I believe this comes out to be something like, well, this is uh, 0 0.7, 40 divided by 
8. And that should come out to times 10 to the third. 3.5 kip. It obviously fails due to bearing before it does, before it yields in tension. Later, uh, down the road here when we do shear, we'll figure out how we take into account that this thing can actually just plain push out the back end. So, but that's that's for later. And here we go. So you uh, have been introduced to this during class. And so we got our key here. And we take out the key. We put on what the loads are. We got this load here of P. And then we've got this surface right here. These two surfaces here and these two are in contact and they're in compression. So what I've got here then is I've got these loads that are coming in this direction here and they're each P over 4. And we need to do this no matter what kind of failure we're doing but you see it tells me right off the bat that this here could be failing in due to bearing. So, for class tomorrow, we're going to go through and have you do the failure due to bearing of this key. And uh, so, that's it. Fairly short one today. Thanks. I can only get it shut.